Hello everybody, it's Jamie from All Chipping Lines and before we begin this video, I just wanted to say something. So, during the syncing part of this video, there is some graphic information. So, I thought I would give you a, uh, a heads up. So, with that out of the way guys, enjoy the video. So, the Van Imhof is a Dutch ship and one you may have never heard of before. So, we'll go over the specifics of the ship. Van Imhof measured 99.2 m in length and 13.4 m wide and measuring 2980 gross register tons with a speed of 11.5 knots being propelled by a single screw. She was owned and operated by the Royal Packet Shipping Co. in Dutch Koninklijk Pakketvaartmaatschappij and was launched on 20 June 1914, built by the Feyenoord Shipbuilding. The Van Imhof was named after a governor general, Gustav Willem van Imhof, and she would be delivered three months later. She mainly was used to transport products for the Dutch and indigenous trade from the Dutch East Indies. Products such as tobacco, salt and coal. And she would later be used for transporting government officials to various islands. Now, fun fact, the paint on ships had to be very specific as certain paint and the paint used on the Van Imhof was to resist heat. When the Second World War began in 1939, the Dutch government requisitioned many merchant ships. This included the Van Imhof and her other fleet mates. And their purpose was to transport war supplies, troops and internees. Now in January 1942, the board of the then colony made the decision to move the 2300 German citizens from Suboga to Bombay in the British West Indies. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, this move was made for the fear of the approaching Imperial Japanese Army, which could collude with the German citizens. On 18 January 1942, the Van Imhof made a departure for Australia under the command of Hermann Huxema and was one of five ships transporting internees, three of which, including Van Himhoff, were transporting German internees and the other two Japanese internees. On board the Imhoff were an estimated 477 mil Germans, 62 guards and 48 crew members. The internees included mainly missionaries, priests, entrepreneurs, teachers, elderly, the disabled and about 70 seamen. Now the conditions on board weren't great and there was a lack of even. And in the steerage area many were tightly packed and there was a lack of drinking water, very few sanitary facilities and a lack of rescue equipment for all personnel on board. And was the captain aware of this? Yes, yes he was. Now one thing I forgot to add was that the Germans who were in the Dutch Indies, they were trying to flee the dark clouds now hanging above Nazi Germany. And then to flee to safety you think in Dutch Indies to then be locked up in such a small ship like the Van Imhof, it's quite sad. In the afternoon on January 19, 1942, around 110 miles east of San Matura, there was a Japanese warplane spotted. The ship began performing a zigzag pattern as the warplane began dropping bombs. And the ship was mostly successful, but one came close enough to the ship that the blast force caused a hole to burst below the waterline. Now the pumps were put into effect to slow the incoming water flow 
and the ship started to send out an SOS. Now by 3 pm it became clear to the crew that the ship could not be saved as the pumps couldn't keep up and the captain gave the order to abandon ship. Now the guards did open the cages of the internees before throwing the keys to them and abandoning ship via the lifeboats and leaving all the Germans to their fates. Now for those Germans on board the situation was tragic. Some reported that many started drinking from the realization that they wouldn't make it out alive. And some even hanging themselves and others even cutting their wrists open as and bleed out. For them it was a better way to die bleeding out than to slowly drown. The reports of how many Germans survived remained debated. Some say 411, some say 413 were killed, but others say 272 died. The Dutch Royal Navy responded to the SOS signals and dispatched a few ships, including a PBY craft, which rescuing the Dutch crew and guards was their top priority. And to show the high priority of rescuing the Dutch, on the 20th January a raft was spotted, filled with internees and reported to the SS Bulongan. And the ship pulled up near the lifeboat and called out to the Germans if there were any Dutch personnel in their boat. When the Germans responded with nothing and begged for food and water, the Dutch ignored them and sailed away. According to a survivor, eventually all survivors were accounted for and it totaled to around 65 of the 477 who had survived the sinking, thus resulting in 412 lives lost. So that means the end of the video once again. My friends, again, I'm sorry, but this video can be left on a positive note. Um, after the sinking, actually, Captain Hoeksema was at one time being called a war criminal for leaving all those Germans on board. But he was quickly acquitted from those charges and the whole Van Imhof disaster was actually put under a rock. Nobody knew of this disaster till uh, a Dutch documentary called uh, The Fall of the Van Imhof was released and then some light came to this immensely sad tragic disaster. So I still hope you enjoyed this video and that you guys learned something from this video. Uh, I quickly want to take a moment to thank all my new subscribers who have subscribed. That really means a lot. And now we are trying to reach these 600 subscribers. And I know we can do it together. So, my friends, thank you for watching this sad, tragic video. Uh, leave in the comments, by the way, what you think. And we will see each other in the next video. So, my friends, have a good day or night, wherever you are. And goodbye.